Chapter 10 Soulmate Pairs Whether you are a descendant being, an accomplished soul Adam slash Adam volunteer, are of the abomination, or are a root race Adamic deep in the mire, when you projected into the temporary third dimensional timeline of Earth it was necessary for your ovarian soul Adam slash Adam self to split into a dimensional male and female soulmate pair of individuals in order to work within the mostly separate male and female entity structures of the animal kingdom. The male and a female soul atom and soul atom from an ovarian atom which has been split are called a soulmate pair. Under normal circumstances, soulmate pairs live and work together and as loving partners through life. Whom God has united in heaven let no man rend asunder. In the projection, the male slash female status of your original soul atom slash atom is upheld by the respective soul atom in a female body and soul atom in a male body within the incarnation. In the fifth dimension and higher, all bodies are universally male slash female androgen. Soulmate pairs almost always project into adjacent male female astrophysical frequencies. If one of you is a Pisces the other will be an Aries. If one is a Taurus the other will be a Gemini and so on. You almost always project together, even if the prevalent frequencies of the incarnation force you to project on the opposite sides of the planet, and even if you have to project a couple of years apart. Whole soul atom slash atoms undertaking responsibility will sometimes project more than one of its ovarian atoms into a lower dimensional situation. In a chaotic condition like Earth, a male and a female from two different ovarian atoms of the same whole soul atom slash atom can, and sometimes do, work together as soul affinities for an incarnation or two. Different male and female atoms from different whole soul ovarian atoms can and often do work together, as temporary affinities on the mental plane frequencies. Everyone on Earth should be working together, as full proper soulmate couples today, and would be were the conditions not so abysmal. In the inner creation a whole soul atom slash atom and its ovarian complement function as a single unit. The whole soul atom slash atom oversees the activities and affairs of its ovarian atoms like an orchestra conductor with each ovarian atom undertaking specific responsibilities on behalf of the whole. The whole soul atom slash atom is at all times fully aware of the presence and activities of each ovarian atom, as though it were the ovarian atom itself. Each ovarian atom is fully aware of the activities and affairs of the other ovarian atoms and whole soul atom slash atom, as though it were the whole soul atom slash atom itself. In the outer creation, whole soul atom slash atoms of the descendancy are fully aware of, if it's ovarian atoms. To the degree that a projecting purpose calls for it, the consciousness of each ovarian atom is aware of the others and the whole soul atom slash atom. Depending on the degree of their advancement, the consciousness of ovarian atoms of the ascendancy are fully aware or only partially aware of the others and the whole soul atom slash atom. When the whole soul atom slash atom of an ascendant becomes a crested sun in preparation for continuing migration into the inner creation, its consciousness becomes fully aware of its other ovarian complement expressions. In becoming trinitized at the feet of the creators in paradise, the whole soul atom slash atom becomes collectively unified by each of its ovarian complement becoming fully aware of its whole soul atom slash atom totality. When projecting into the densities of a third dimensional timeline, the consciousnesses of ovarian atoms who have split into soulmate pairs become completely concretized into independent existences. An aspect of the risk. As though walking around in murky water, the outer consciousness has no direct contact with the inner, the so-called veil. The inner has no visibility of the outer world, until the outer consciousness begins to come back into a realignment with the inner. The only way the higher realities can monitor what is actually occurring inside a murky lower dimensional condition such as on Earth, is through the eyes so to speak of those whose outer consciousnesses have started to come back into a realignment with their inner consciousness expression enough that some information can get through.
Like a TV camera deep underwater, the perceptions of the outer consciousness start passing up through the realignment to the soul atom or soul atom in residence, who then pass it back upstairs through its unbreakable tether with its whole soul atom slash atom totality and those who are sanctioned to monitor the frequency. When entering into the 25,000 year evolutionary cycles of Earth's timeline, soulmate pairs incarnate according to a simple rule. Regardless of whether you are a male or a female being in your astrophysical family principle, usually your male half atom will incarnate into the female astrophysical signs as a female person. Your female half atom will incarnate as a male. Your male half atom will incarnate into the male astrophysical signs as a female person and your female half atom will incarnate as a male. Pisces is a female sign, Aries male. Your male half atom will incarnate into Aries as a female, your female half atom will incarnate into Pisces as a male, and so on. Most people incarnated on Earth today are in their original sign of their astrophysical family of their creation because of the conclusion of the 25,000 year cycle. From this, most of you should be able to figure out your original family frequency of birth. Of the 12 2000 year dispensations in every 25,000 year cycle, the first six are inductive and the final six discharges. During the induction phases of every cycle the males learn induction and the females put it into practice. During the discharges phases the females learn to induct and the males put it into practice. The same is true for the inducting and discharging phases of each 2000 year dispensation. In this way, the male slash female nature of your greater soul atom slash atom stays intact and you gain the fullest possible scope of experience and expression working within all the frequencies of the astrophysics environment for that local. Individually, over the net 24 incarnations, if the incarnations were properly constituted thousand-year projections, between the two of you, you would have learned how to work harmoniously with all 12 of the frequencies in both induction and discharge mode. You would have also experienced both male and female outer body expressions through all of the frequencies. Under the current circumstances, the correct cycle of thousand-year avatar incarnations has been all but mixed but the principle still works the same. Today societies reflect this to a T. Regardless of astrophysical frequencies and in which country, half of the population are currently in an induction mode incarnation reflecting conservative thinking which wants things to stay the way they are. The other half are in a discharges mode anxious to get their ideas to the fore as liberal thinkers. The sociological balances of each's presence holds the other in check. The liberal thinkers don't run off the deep end in unbridled enthusiasm. The conservative thinkers don't stay stultified in frozen doctrinaire, except here and there in splintered occurrences due to the conditions. Adam and Eve were an ovarian soulmate pair in the fifth dimension Garden of Eden. Noah and his wife were an ovarian soulmate pair in the third dimensional timeline condition. Lot and his wife were an ovarian soulmate pair in the third dimensional timeline condition. Mary and Jesus were an ovarian soulmate pair in the third dimensional timeline condition. Mary was Jesus of their projected half who had only passive responsibilities in the outer goings-on at the time. Of the inner goings-on it was a different matter. Mary was the only one at the door of the tomb for three days, while Jesus underwent the process of resurrection. In their whole Adam seventh dimensional reality they are known as Christ Michael of Salvington, the creator son slash daughter holding this local universe in his slash her consciousness. Through his slash her live stream this local universe exists, and folds its blueprinted expression, and undergoes its expansion and evolution. Jesus and Mary were an ovarian atom of Christ Michael, who underwent special preparation including a fifth dimensional root race sojourn 250 million years ago in order to be able to hold the exceptional frequencies of Christ Michael's official bestowal of 2000 years ago. 2000 years ago Jesus and Mary held the full consciousness expression of Christ Michael's 5th and 7th dimensional creative son slash daughter capacity, while in their lower dimensional projection. 
they held the entire string of responsibilities and life stream functionalities of the whole local universe of nearly a thousand galaxies passing through their higher consciousnesses matrices, as they walked about on the surface of the planet. An ultimate miracle of creation never before attempted. Because the current Earth evolution is presently bound to third dimension awareness and man accepts a death condition in consciousness inherited from the animal kingdom, the incarnate cycles at the moment are very short. Those of you who have been out in this evolutionary plane for a long time have been incarnating for up to 400 times during each 24,000 year period instead of only 24. Some of you have been doing so for well over 2 and 3 million years. In the particular case of Atlantis, because the evolution had already been down in the third dimensional material structure, for over three million years, by the time of Atlantis the normal pattern of thousand year incarnations was already well beyond abrogation. When the Gentiles were brought into Atlantis during Leo, because of their malpractices within the frequencies of planetary law and in particular their appalling experiments in the mental substance slash energy X factor frequencies known as sex, a Sodomic condition arose putting a bind on Taurus. The Taurus and Scorpio centers have a link. Scorpio is also directly linked to the pineal gland in the forehead for helping animals to their mates. When it came time to pass through the gender changes at the end of Leo, the Sodomic condition literally let loose, grievously compounding the imbalances and even more severely congesting the mass consciousness through the abject mind on Taurus. Because normal consciousness flows became all but thwarted, the masses began abandoning their higher practices and became debased. The conditions became so severe that eventually Atlantis was lost. Today, because the current patterns of very short cycles of incarnations are still to be translated, the current overall pairing of soulmates on Earth is all but gone, the subjugate of carnal attraction. The carnal condition of Scorpio through the congested constriction of Taurus is the main planetary affliction which needs to be translated at the present time. Most of you proclaiming to have found your true soulmate have merely found a particularly compatible affinity on your mental frequency. Or you fancy the attributes. You have between 10,000 and 10 million people on your mental frequency. The rushing and or chirping sound in your ears when falling asleep are usually the collective thoughts of those on your frequency. Someone met a new, yet who somehow seems completely familiar, is likely to be on your mental frequency. Also, consciousness knows consciousness. People who are on the same frequency and who are more established in their upper triangle will feel an even greater instant empathy towards each other through the attunement towards Christ responsibility. Most of you today are married in affinity relationships. Not altogether an abomination under the circumstances save arranged marriages. Two people living in a harmonious affinity relationship can interact very positively in expressing true Christ purpose. Where two or more are gathered in my namesake, there am I also. It is a far cry however from what will eventually be required for all the energies to come back into proper alignment in proper balance. By the time down the road when all the conditions are finally cleared, you will be back in your true soulmate dimensional state of coexistence, standing together for your transmigration to your next expansionary or expressionary experience whatever it might be. When your evolutionary or responsibility experiences are all complete, you will end up back up in your original ovarian unity, greater made, ready for yet another cycle of advancement or responsibility in Christ projected co-creative co-activity. This should answer the pounding question of sexual orientation. The idea of sexual orientation is but a nom de plume, the simple result of not coping with the switch in frequencies correctly in successive incarnations. Same-sex relationships are the Sodomic condition of Atlantis perpetuating over and over again, an extremely serious usurpation of substance slash energy under carnal effect through misadventure or sex factor thought impositions. The condition must be translated immediately for evolution to proceed again on proper track. 
for those of you who are still such carnally afflicted and not yet ready to realign, the road ahead is going to become bumpier and bumpier, as the pressures on you become more and more unsavory in the frequencies to come. Continued, Chapter 11 Copyright to Lanava Star Livingstone, Cliff R. Projections, Canada, 1998-2008 all rights reserved worldwide web.revelatorium.com